Okay. So I've made this large thrown slab just by throwing it out on the table. And now all I have to do is lay it over top of my armature, creating the form that I'm trying to match for my owl. Okay. And then using one of your tools, um, you could use the needle tool or this, the knife. I actually have this little um, cleanup tool that I'm just going to use. You can see it's soft enough where I can push around and down and match that. Try to create a nice clean edge where it connects to the background or the table surface. Okay, peel off the extra. You can save this clay for later for some of the details. Okay, and again, try to clean up that outside edge. I'm just checking a little bit of symmetry here. And then I want this to come down on an angle. It's not perfect yet, so I'm just going to do a couple of minor adjustments. It's soft enough to where you can just kind of press and pull where you need. Like this was a little bit too far to the middle. And again, make sure that this edge looks good. All right. Now, for the eye sockets, um, you know, an owl... Uh, is not too different from a lot of other creatures where the eyes sit inside and behind the socket, okay? If you held your hand up flat against your, your face over your eye, it's not touching your eyeball, okay? Your eye is recessed in the socket, so for the owl, I'm just going to trace where those would go. And then this is the area around that's actually going to be pressed into the surface, okay? The beak will go something like right here. And I'm gonna have that open just for more detail and interest. But I'm just mapping out my features, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is actually start that compression, pushing this in and then kind of rounding off the socket edge Okay, then I'm going to push in here and repeat. Maybe a little bit above the beak too, considering like a brow. Okay. Now, like I said, the eyes are round beads inside of the socket. With soft clay, you can get away without slipping and scoring. So if you work quickly, all I'm going to do is score these edges to help the surface texture grip. And then I'm going to take extra clay like this and create two little spheres. Okay. And I'm going to score the backs of these two. Okay. I'm going to use firm pressure, but I'm not going to flatten this. I'm going to work my fingers around this to help push that into the cavity. Remember, you want to hold your hand over the top of this, and you should not feel the top of this bead, okay, the eye. Okay. Repeat on this side, too. Okay, again, pushing around, not flat in the middle. 
Now, another way to do this, it is, you know, something like a mask. This obviously wouldn't be proportionate to my eyes. My physical eyes would be like right here. So maybe I could create like some false cutouts here, some false eyes for me to wear this. But I'm going to use this more as like a, a hanging like wall relief. Okay. All right. Now that looks kind of weird, just stuck like that. So let's make some eyelids. Okay. All you're going to do is just roll some coils in your hand. Okay. Or on the table. And then I'll start with the lower coil or the lower eyelid, pushing that around the bottom half, tearing off the extra, and repeating on the other side. Okay. Now, when I push these, I don't really push like the middle half of this. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to take this from that spot and blend that down. Okay. And I'm just going to pull and smooth that out. I actually like that texture that's developing, so I'm going to leave that. And just repeat on this side. Okay. Again, leave that little bit of a lip for the lid. And then we're going to repeat on the top edge. Just a little different though. Okay. So we're going to overlap just a little. Press around for the top. Okay. Try to consider too, like the upper lid is what moves the most when you open and close your eyes. So if you wanted this to look more like an eye slit, like it's, you know, angrier or sleepier, you could bring that down and smooth it up more. Okay. Um, close to being asleep. Okay. I'm going to have mine very alert and attentive. So wide open eyes. And I'm going to repeat what I did before. Okay. But the only difference this time is I'm going to use this scoop edge on an angle pushing in for the top eyelid. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of soften that up with my fingers pushing through the form. Okay. Again, just to repeat. Pulling this back, leaving a good section so that this has some depth to the lid. And then using that scoop end, pushing in to the eyelid. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to tear this off. But um, I just want you guys to consider features like a lot of you are doing mammals um, and other things that have noses and mouths. Um, obviously, like if I was doing like a wolf or something that had a snout, I'd have another armature piece that comes forward here. But um, if I was doing a, a nose for a mammal, I'd be considering um, like this section here and the nostrils. So pushing in, okay, coming down here, pushing in, coming down here, and then that little cleft. I'm not going to just leave a line. I'm going to use the angle of the tool to round that off, okay? And then... The fur typically overgrows a, a snout, so I would create a little bit of a lip here above. This one is going to press like really close to the face, though. OK. 
Okay. And then I would even do an undercut right around here. And if this was like, I don't know, maybe more of like a, a sloth face, kind of starting to look like that, I would start pushing and lifting this. But see how I'm not just using like the tip of the tool, I'm actually using that scoop to create the roundness in my form. Okay. Pushing in some of those extra spaces. Okay, so that's how to do some eyes, um, a mam mammals type nose, even nostrils for other creatures, um, and a mouth if you're doing something more mammalian. Okay, you could even start texturing stuff like this if it had whiskers. Um, I've had students in the past um, create holes with their needle point, and then what they do after the fact um, is they'll take fishing line and we'll glue it into those sections after it's fired so you'll have actual whiskers coming off of the mats. Okay? Any questions on that? Yes, sir. What if you're making something prehistoric, like, for example, a uh, pterodactyl you're or an aerodactyl? So it doesn't matter what creature you're creating. Oh, pull that back, please. Um, you're still going to use just an... A, a large thick slab to go over the base form okay and then you're going to create sockets for the eyes so that's why I focused on those two particularly today is just make sure that you have the base over top of your armature create your eye sockets whether they go flat on the front or if it's something like this where they go onto the sides you'd press in here and here right mm -hmm. and then your mouth is going to open right down here yeah. Right. So it doesn't matter what you create. The, the process is the same, just applied to over top of a different form. OK, so the only thing that changes is where those features are applied, whether they're on the front, the sides, you know, that sort of thing. Any questions? OK, well, that's it for my demo today. Um, it's time for you guys. I'll start passing out uh, large blocks of clay so that you can um, apply that over top of your armatures, okay? You guys ready? Make sure to like, comment, Sweet. and subscribe for more Zelensky e -fun.